Welcome back to the final video of our Power BI project. In this video, we will finally work with the cloud solution, Power BI service. Because of that, I'm already on the pricing page. Because as you can see right here, we have three different versions available. Now what's the difference and what version do we need? Well, the first thing we can see is that Power BI Premium right here is for large deployments. This means in our case, we do not need that. So let's focus on to these two versions now. Well, the first version, the left one, is the free version. This includes, of course, Power BI Desktop. We work with that already. And also partially kind of includes Power BI Service. This means publishing data from Power BI Desktop to Power BI Service is possible without paying. The problem is that sharing the information that you publish to Power BI Service with other people is not possible. And therefore, well, the free version is great to play around. But if you really want to use that, you will see that these limitations might be a problem soon. And that's the reason why Power BI Pro is the version we will use in this project. Now you can see that this costs almost $10 per user per month. But the great thing is that you also get a free trial right here. This is a 60 days free trial by the way, so not just one day or something like that. So for this project you can simply sign in to Power BI Pro for using this free trial actually and then play around with the tool. There is only one important thing that you have to keep in mind. To create such a Power BI service or Pro account, you need a corporate or a school or a university email. Email domains like Gmail, for example, won't work to create a Power BI account. That's important. But as soon as you got such an email address, you are free to create such an account and by that use the 60 days trial of Power BI Pro. Now, as soon as you did that and logged into Power BI Service, then you will see something like that. Well, as part of this project, we will not cover all of the functions of Power BI Service actually. We will just focus on to the core functions. And these core functions basically include how can we now publish our project from Power BI Desktop to Power BI Service and how can we then share our results. So let's do this right now. Well, the first thing we can do is we can, well, we could use that, but I want to go to my workspace first, right here, because this is, well, as the name says, your workspace, where you can see your dashboards, your reports, your workbooks, and your data sets. We can skip the workbooks because that's rather related to Excel, which we won't use right here, but dashboards, reports, and data sets, that's important. And we can also see these three or these four words actually right here. So you have it right here and right there, just as you prefer. I will work in this interface for the moment. Now we know the data set. So this is kind of the data model that we created. And we know the report. This is kind of the visuals that we created. But what about these dashboards then? Well, we will take a look at these dashboards right now. But to create a dashboard and to see our report, we need to be able to get the information of Power BI Desktop into Power BI Service. For that, we have two options actually. The first option would be to simply go to create right here and now select data set right there. You can now go to files with this get button and then go to local file and by that select your Power BI desktop project and then import the data this way. One option, you can use this, totally fine. But I would like to show you something else. And to do this, we can go back to our workspace actually right here and now switch back to our Power BI desktop project that we finished in the last video. So our project Taxi right here. Because there are two important things in Power BI desktop now when it comes to kind of publishing that information to Power BI service. If you go to the home ribbon right here, well, then you can see this publish button. I'll come back to that in a few seconds. And you can also see that sign in button. And that's kind of connected, of course because we now created our Power BI service account and by that we have login data. And we can now also log in right here into Power BI Desktop to kind of connect these accounts and to kind of be able to, well, publish the data then. Now let's simply press on to publish now. And here we only have to enter our Power BI service login data. So here we need the email address. Step one, so let's press sign in now. 
And now we need the password, of course. Step two, and if we now press sign in, well, then you can see that our project is immediately published to Power BI service. Additionally, you can also see that you're logged in right here because, well, your name is now displayed right there. And now the publishing process was successful. We got it, so we can actually close that right here. And if we now go back to Power BI service, then we also see that our dataset is ready. So we can close that right here. Now, where do we see our dataset now? Well, as I said, you can click right here if you want to, but then, well, you kind of don't see a lot of it. But if you click right here into this left column onto your project data set right here, well, then you can see if you click into this fields column and open it, your project and the different tables actually with the different columns. But we don't see the report here, but this makes sense because if you now look right here in that report part, click onto that, then you can see all the different visuals that we created locally in Power BI Desktop, which are now available right there. This is nice. But let's go back to that data set now. Because as you can see right here, we are in a data set, but this kind of looks like the report view that we had in Power BI Desktop. And this simply means if we click right here onto that pie chart, for example, and maybe increase it a little bit, and then simply add the passengers as a value and the, well, maybe let's select the weekdays again as a legend. Then you have, well, not the most beautiful chart to be honest, but you can see that we now created a new report actually. And if you now want to switch the report, for example, to the existing report, then you're asked if you want to save the changes to this report. And if you now press save, then you can create, well, let's call that report test maybe like that. And then you can save that report like this. Well, and with that, you can see that we still have only, oops, we can close that, that you still have only one data set, of course, but you have the two reports. You have your project taxi report and the report test. Now, the important thing is also, and this is true for both reports, that you're now in kind of a reading view. But if you change it to the edit report view, then you can also work on your report. So you can now simply change the size or drag it to the left and maybe create a second bar chart right here, like that. And again, add the date and I don't know, the distance maybe as a value, like that. Again, not the most beautiful chart to be honest. But the important thing is that you can now press save right here, like that. And now you save that change to the report right here. You can also do this right here, by the way. But of course, you won't change your underlying Power BI Desktop report if you change something right here. So I won't change that report, actually. I just wanted to make sure that you're aware of that, that you can import the data set, that you can then display your report that you created in Power BI Desktop, and that you can also create a new report based on the data set that you created in Power BI Desktop. So we kind of have a basic understanding now of the data set and of the reports. But we didn't talk about the dashboard so far. This is something we should do right now. Because let's go to our project tax report right here and see how we can now create a dashboard based on the information right here. Well, before we do that, a dashboard is actually just kind of a cover page. So this kind of includes the core visuals that you want to show to another person immediately. So if you have 10 pages in the report, we talked about that, about the report with the different pages, then you might want to pick the best or the most important visual of each page and show this in a dashboard. If the other person then wants to dive deeper, then the person can do this by jumping into the report. Now, let me show you how this works. Because basically you have two options how you can create such a dashboard. Well, the first thing is you are in the report. And if you then click on to pin live page, then you can decide if you want to pin that whole page, that's important, to an existing dashboard. Well, we don't have any dashboards, so we cannot do that. Or to a new dashboard. So if we now give it a name, let's call that dash page maybe, and press pin live. Yes, this is interesting, so we can close that. But now you can see that we have a dashboard, and if we click onto that, well, then we can see that we have our entire dashboard right here. We can click into the charts and play around with that. That's important. But, well, normally you won't pin your whole page. 
normally, as I said, you want to pin some specific visuals of your report. So let's go back to our Project Taxi report then and now maybe pin only our column chart right here, this one. If you select that visual, then you can find that pin symbol right here and it says pin visual. So if we click onto it, then we could add that to our existing dashboard, the one we just created, but we don't want that. We want to create a new dashboard and this could be dash visual then, like that for example. If you now press pin right here, then yes, we know it's created. But then you see that we have the second dashboard created. And if you now click onto dash visual, well, then you can see our dashboard right here. And if you click onto that, then you jump into the underlying report. And that's also what I wanted to explain to you a few minutes ago. You have the dashboard with the first cover page, that first important information. And if you want to dive deeper, then you can jump into the report. And right there, you can play around, of course, again. So this is interesting, but so far we simply publish the information from Power BI Desktop to Power BI as service and we then created a new report page and created a dashboard. But what if you want to share that information now? So let's say you want to share the dash visual, this dashboard, and the underlying report with another person. How can you do that now? Well, the answer is really simple because we only have to go to dash visual, so the dashboard that we want to share, and then we can see that share option right here. Well, if we click onto that, well, then you have to make sure that only users with Power BI Pro will have access to this dashboard. And that's what I wanted to tell you a few minutes ago when we talked about the pricing and the different versions. You basically need Power BI Pro to really use this sharing features. That's just what it is actually. But if you have another person which is using Power BI Pro, then you can now really easy share the information. Because the only thing you have to do right now, you have to enter an email address right here. In my case, this is a Gmail address. So if I press enter now, then you can see that sending that or sharing the dashboard with a person having Gmail is not possible. But again, this makes sense. Because if only people who have Power BI Pro can access this dashboard, then, well, these people need a Power BI account. And as I told you in the beginning, to create such an account, you cannot use a Gmail address, for example. So that's important. I just wanted to show you that again. So you need a person that has Power BI Pro and by that a valid email address. So let's change that now to an email address that is not Gmail, which I did right now. And now we get another warning. But the good thing is that this warning is not a real problem. It's only a hint that you will share this information now with a person outside your organization. That's important. You can share the information with people inside your organization, of course, but also with other people which are not part of your organization. However, if you share it, the person can access the information and therefore you should be careful who you share your information with. But we want to share it now, so this is fine. So we can now scroll down. And now we can specify if the person should be allowed to share our dashboard again. No, we don't want that. And if the person should receive an email notification. Yeah, I think this is totally fine. So we can now press share right here. And now we see that our dashboard has been shared successfully. So let me now check my emails of my other account because obviously I invited myself with another account right here to show you this. Well, and after you share the dashboard, the other person will receive an email with such a link. So if you click onto that link, then the other person gets this information. I'm sorry, this is German right here, but this basically means down there, this means register. And this is simply, well, sign in. So this should be in your language then. So I'll click on to sign in, of course. And after the other person then signed in into the account, then, well, we can access the dashboard right here. You can see that. We can click into it, of course, and by that go to report and also jump around in the report. This is great, but we cannot access the total data set. That's important. The only thing that's available for this other person, and that's also something you have to keep in mind, is of course the underlying data of the different visuals. Because if the other person simply clicks right here, then it can export the data. So that's important. This means with that method, you share the dashboard, you share the report 
and you share the underlying data of the visuals that you share, but you don't share the entire data set. And that's it actually. That's our Power BI project. Because now you saw kind of an example workflow, how you can use Power BI and how to combine Power BI Desktop and Power BI Service. So we had a look at Power BI Desktop, the local application, to prepare our data, to create our data model, and to create our report with the different visuals. We then published that results to Power BI Service and were then even able to share our dashboard and our reports with other people. And with that, I hope that you learned something in that videos that can help you in your work with Power BI. And with that, the only thing I can say right now is, as always actually, thanks a lot for watching and hope to see you in the next videos. Bye bye.